Um, I don't know what it would take for Africans to stay on the continent. We're trying, we're fighting to get to the continent and they're fighting to get away from the continent. I don't understand. And then we don't understand each other and then we're fighting against each other and we're playing into um, the system that is built against us. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to run to a system that is built against you? Hey, what's good, everybody? Thank you very much for checking me out. This is Echo Simpson. I am very, 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 very happy to be here again because the conversation is getting attractive and the conversation that we are supposed to have is getting massive. Uh, today is a beautiful day, like I keep saying. I always call it a beautiful day because I can choose to call it a bad day or a positive day, but I would rather pick the positive side of life. There is a conversation between Africans. That is it. But some will say Africans in the motherland, Africans in the diaspora. How do we come together to fight for a common goal, for a common cause? That is why lately you see that I'm interviewing both Africans in the motherland. It, you could be younger, older, professional, professional, whatever, because we want to learn the culture, the lifestyle of each other and vice versa. Today, I have here with me uh, a wonderful mother, a wonderful auntie. Uh, she's in the United States. And we're going to talk about the similarities amongst Africans, depending on where we find ourselves. So with this beautiful honor, I'm bringing my auntie on it. Hello, Rio. How are you doing? I'm good, Echo. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. You? I love, I'm, I'm doing perfect. I love the smile. This is an African smile. I love it. Okay, I got, there's more where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. So um, tell us where you are now, which state you are. And what is the environment today? How is the feeling today? I'm in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I'm on the coastal side. Okay. So it's um, it's actually kind of cool for us, but it's nowhere near like where you are, I go. <laughs> <laughs> cool like in the mid-60s Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. um, which is a light jacket or a sweater, and it feels amazing. Perfect walking weather. Whoa. Perfect working weather. Uh, I have plans to visit North Carolina, which I have heard, maybe you would uh, confirm too. I have heard that North Carolina, South Carolina, they have history when it comes to Black American culture or the Af a bit of African culture in there. Mm. You may be speak thinking of the Geechee culture. Yes. Out of South Carolina, they... I believe they derived from the Yoruba tribe out of Nigeria, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. But they were given a plot of land uh, after the enslavement ended, and they kind of fended for themselves. They didn't go out and mingle much with outsiders, and they maintained all of their African culture, and right. they passed it down to their children. Right. You know, and um, for years they were looked down upon, even by African Americans, because you know everybody wants to get away from mm -hmm. the African thing. Everybody wants to be as much as white as possible. <laughs> and in recent times, I say the past two, three decades, we've come to realize that's actually what we needed was to hold on to ourselves, to our culture. Right. Right. Um, they have a language that is kind of a, a patois of Yoruba and English. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great. Now, before we get into the conversation, you might want to tell us your name, where you represent, so that, I mean, people will relate to who uh, we are talking to. Okay, well, my name is Robin. Everyone calls me Rio <laughs> because I had great dreams of building orphanages in Rio de Janeiro, and I was going to be the savior, and all the children they were calling pickpockets were going to be their doctors and lawyers. Mm -hmm. And I've been talking like that since I was in elementary school. So they're like, Rio de Janeiro. That was nice. <laughs> so I wear it proudly now. Everyone calls me Rio. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a mother of two mm-hmm. and divorced. Uh, my kids are grown. I have grandbabies now. Um, wow. I'm a retired video producer and I do stuff now. I, I dabble in tech. Um, I'm headed to Uganda. I told Whoa. you about Mugi. Yeah. Mugi introduced me to a nonprofit that rescues sex trafficking girls. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go and work with them and document the testimony and stories. And I am stoked about that. I think that is, it kind of fits in the uh, vibe of Rio. Really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm very excited about it. Right. In, in your conversation previously, you made mention of everybody trying to be the white thing, you know, dropping the African thing. Even in Ghana, in Africa, some of us, I wouldn't take myself out, some of us, because of the what we see, the brainwashing and everything, we feel like everything white, everything European is the best. Why do you think people try to to relate themselves to that European kind of thing, even doing away with the African vibe? Brainwashing. Mm -hmm. They've taken everything. You know, the best way to deceive someone I've learned since, see, you guys are lucky. You don't have to live on the rock right here with them. You get Mm -hmm. to be over there in your own land and keep your culture and all of that. Mm -hmm. We're right here with them. We have to deal with them every day. Mm -hmm. So we look at them and we learn their ways and we see um, how we're portrayed in a certain way and they're portrayed in a certain way. Everything black is bad. Yeah. Everything white is good. Mm-hmm. And it starts from small, small children in the educational system and everything. That they'll ask a small child of five or six, here's a black doll, here's a white doll. Which doll is pretty? The white doll. Wow. Here's a black doll, here's a white doll. Which doll is good and which doll is bad? Black doll is bad and the white doll is good. Mm-hmm. And that small, small mind. Mm-hmm. And then we grow with that. And, you know, when you look at TV, everything beautiful has blonde hair and blue eyes. And here in America, <clears throat> we're told our natural hair mm-hmm. is ugly. It's not professional. You shouldn't show up on a job looking like that. If you wear afro, if you wear braids, if you wear, oh, dreadlocks, forget about it. They have actually cut small children in school, cut the locks out of the boys' hair, and those locks were gorgeous. Cut them off, saying he, he looked like a thug because oh. they had locks. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're trained to hate ourselves. And I don't know how that looked in uh, Africa, mm-hmm. but here it's like we, we have a saying light, bright, and close to white. You know you right. Mm-hmm. The lighter your skin, the better you are. The better you are, yeah. Right. So dark skinned people are kind of looked down upon. When you go to look for a job, they say we're bilingual because we we speak professionally like white people. Mm-hmm. And then we speak naturally, which is nowhere like white people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So on the phone, you sound one way, and then they, they mm-hmm. meet you in person. They're like, oh, they might go through the interview, but, you know, it's a lot better now than it used to be. But now it's right. starting to revert back again because the economy is so bad. Right. And uh, uh, Kamala and Biden has let in all these uh, immigrants mm-hmm. and for the purpose of getting their votes. Yeah, and securing for future elections, mm-hmm. but they're letting in a lot of the immigrants are good people. They just want a better life. Okay, yeah, and a lot of them are. Venezuela emptied their prisons mm-hmm. and sent them here. So now, people in New York, Ohio, Detroit, Texas, Colorado, are being harassed with these um, gangsters that yeah. are instead of don't pay your rent, you pay me that money. Mm-hmm. So they're trying to find out what to do and where to go and how to live. And the migrants are given jobs, money every month, mm-hmm. food stamps, 
free lodging, things Americans can't get. Meanwhile, you have veterans who's paid taxes and put their life on the line for this country, right. living under bridges and boxes. Mm -hmm. So I lost my in, in that, in that, in that, in that, in that, in, in other words, can we say that you made mention of immigrants come there for a better life? Mm -hmm. uh, we are coming back to the Africa, African diaspora thing. Do, do, in your own words, would you say that it is okay for Africans to migrate to look for a system that we think? that, for example, the American system that we think that is working. So we have to leave our families, leave our jobs, save a bunch of money just to travel to the West and think that, okay, we are here for a better life. Okay, that's really a tough question because people have migrated mm -hmm. since the beginning of time. Right. Adam and Eve and then... Uh, uh, Cain and Abel and Cain left and, you know, Adam and Eve got kicked out the garden and then they had to migrate somewhere and all the children had to migrate. Moses was in the wilderness. They went to Europe, to Egypt. Then they were in uh, Israel. And it's, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? We have been migrating this earth forever. Right. It's been the current powers that be that put all these borders in place and saying, you can't go here and you can't go there. Mm -hmm. It is natural for us to want to migrate. Right. So I, I want to say that first. Um, I don't know what it would take for Africans to stay on the continent. We're trying, we're fighting to get to the continent and they're fighting to get away from the continent. I don't understand. And then we don't understand each other and then we're fighting against each other and we're playing into um, the system that is built against us. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to run to a system that is built against you? They're going to tell you, oh, well, you're smart. You're better than them. They're lazy. They don't want to work. They're all gangsters. They're all thugs. When it's not true. And then they tell us, oh, they're barbarians. They live in trees. They, they are um, um, cannibals. I mean, they just tell us ridiculous. You want to live like a monkey? Don't go there. Mm -hmm. That is the furthest thing from the truth. Both things are further from the truth. Now, are there is there poverty in Africa? Yes. Is there, uh, are there gangsters in America? Yes. It's a little bit of truth. The best way to deceive somebody is you take a little bit of truth and then you surround it with a bunch of lies mm -hmm. because we resonate with the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, so when they show us like hanging on the corner and yeah, they show our swag or whatever as if that's the best thing about us, but it's not. We have the same heart as these people. When I was a child, we were a community. So everybody looked out for everybody. Right. Nobody was hungry. Right. If I had a cow and I slaughtered my cow, that meant everybody eats. Everybody was growing their own. Most of us grew our own food. If you didn't have a garden, you come to my garden, you get yourself something to eat. Mm -hmm. If you got to work, you got a baby, I just had a baby. I'll feed the baby for you because mm -hmm. I know you don't have money for milk. Yeah. A child running up and down the, the community, any adult could say, hey, 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 you're wrong and chastise them and send them home. Today, you better not say something to somebody's child. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> and if they find out you're not eating, they find that as something to gossip about or laugh yeah. about, you know, it's all me, 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 you know, but there's still a lot of good people. We just don't have a, a venue for it because the world is so evil now, the right. times that we live in. Right. So we're looking to flee Babylon mm -hmm. and go back to the, the man that birthed us, mm -hmm. back to the motherland. And the people in the motherland are like, why in the world are you coming here? You know, and yeah. we each have misconceptions. An American woman today wasn't really raised. If she was like younger than me, like mm -hmm. 30s on down or something like that. She wasn't raised to know that God is head over man, mm -hmm. just as man is head over woman. 
So you respect your man mm -hmm. and you give him what he needs to feel good and, and want to be a provider and a mm -hmm. protector. Um, right. You know, not me, 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 me mm -hmm. every time you turn around, you know? Yeah, <laughs> not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they're taught that, you know, I am woman, I hear me roar, uh, woman power. And it's not godlike. Once you get out of the order of the way God said things, you're never going to get it right. Get it we right. are so out of order. And then we go back to Africa, which some of you guys are out of order, but you're a whole lot closer to the way it used to be. You mm -hmm. remember that part? Yeah. God made woman. <laughs> and then American woman go over here with all that mouth and African men are looking at her like, I don't like her. <laughs> you know, well, maybe, yeah. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll get a green card. You know, mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that's where we are. And, and it, it doesn't make sense, Echo, because there's so many people with good hearts on both sides. Yeah. We all want a better life on both sides. On both sides, and yeah. Everything we need, we have it. Mm -hmm. We are the richest people on earth. We got all the talent. We got all the smarts. We got all the look, the swag, the uh, innovation. We are excellence. We are God's chosen people. We got all the minerals, the gold, the diamonds, the jewels, the cobalt. We got it all, the oil. But for some reason, no, not for some reason, puppets are put into place yeah. to lead over the people and they don't care about anything other than being a friend to the white man. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. still stuck in that. Um, Fortunately, we're seeing a change with Abraham uh, Traore. Traore, yeah, Traore. In Burkina Faso. He's he's yeah. showing leaders how to act. Mm -hmm. And if they don't want to follow his lead, I don't think the people are going to keep putting up with this puppet stuff. You know, because why are you in a private jet flying over to, to get health care, but we're here dying because we can't afford it and you won't give us good health. Why do you have water? But you know we have to go to that muddy river. You know what I to mean? Get water, yeah. It's it's, it's, um, it's crazy. It's 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 so it's so out of the way, like you said, that those in Babylon like want to come to the peace land, to the motherland. You know, I I I always say that we are lucky to be at where we are. Okay. As in in Africa, you wake up in the morning, you find freshness, all the greens and everything. And then those of us here are like, oh, I want to go to the to America. So the thing has it has to do with the information that is sent to you is way different and opposite to the information that is sent to us. Mm -hmm. So we sit here and see it. And I, I had an interview with one awesome lady. She was like, America are very good when it comes to marketing. They market America in such a way that you, oh, can yeah. even, you can even call your parents in order for you just to leave and go to America. And yeah. the system that is running America doesn't go well for African-Americans or African diaspora out there. So the, the, that is why I believe that is why these conversations are relevant because i'm yeah. learning you're learning and then we take it from there now let's go to when you were growing up now we are going to look at some of the similarities between i can tell you a lot of stories about when we were growing up i personally say that i became a christian because my mother, my grandmother led me to be a christian because mm -hmm. uh, when i was young i used to stay with my grandmother my father was working in nigeria my mother had already passed when I was one year old. So they brought me back to my grandmother. So when she's going to church, she will bath me and I go with them and I go with them and I go with them. And then I feel that's how I became a Christian because it wasn't my intention to be going there, but because she asked me to. Now, when it comes to you growing up in North Carolina, 
what were some of the things i'm saying this i'm asking this because you are now getting closer to africa have you been to africa yet any i live in two weeks <laughs> okay <laughs> we, we 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 can't we can't wait to have you back to share with us your your first time in africa how was it like so yes. but but i know you've you've read you've seen books you've experienced few things how was it like growing up in in north carolina relating it to some of the things that we also do here in africa okay so to be clear i was born in north carolina and i live in north carolina now mm -hmm. i was raised in philadelphia mm -hmm. which is a much much larger city mm -hmm. and um i spent my adult life in atlanta georgia okay so but i always came home north carolina mm -hmm. is home that's where the grandparents were and all that every summer. So I got to see <clears throat> in Philly, if you were playing with your friends at their house and it was time to eat, they would tell you, you have to go. In North Carolina, when I came home, if you were playing with your friends or family and it was time to eat, go wash your hands and come on over mm -hmm. here. Okay. Right. <laughs> um, in North Carolina, um, no, none of the, the elders wanted to see you skinny. If you were skinny, if you were thin, mm -hmm. um, and I don't mean thin like, I mean just thin, just regular mm -hmm. plain. Yeah, we have regular oh, thin. Oh my people. lord, that girl or that that boy needs to eat. Come on over eat, here, and eat. they will feed you and feed you and feed you and feed you. Everywhere you go, you have to eat something. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to visit several people, you can't eat a whole lot. You got to you know taste a little bit here, taste because you know as soon as you, as soon as they open the door, they have something to eat. I got something to eat for you. You know, it's not like that anymore, but. <laughs> That's how it was growing up in North Carolina. Yeah. Whereas in Philly, um, people were more about themselves, but there was a sense of community. Like we look out, they look out for the kids. Mm -hmm. So they're not gonna let your kids be out in the middle of the street get hit by a car or be over here acting up doing something they know they have no business. They'll by the time they'll send you home, and by the time you get home, your parents know about it. Mm -hmm. You're in trouble. Um, that was in Philly. In Philly, uh, if they knew you were struggling with your rent or something, they would get together and have a party and charge like, you know, a quarter for drinks or 10 cents to get in or, you know, five cents for a bag of potato chips or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they would give the person that needed to pay their rent the money. Okay. They call it a rent party. And rent that's how oh, okay. it Yeah. That's how they looked out for each other there. In the country, though, it was more about working the land. We used to have outhouses mm -hmm. where you had to go outside to use the bathroom. Yeah. And then when you, um, in the morning, before you get started, you go out to the well and you get the water for the day. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody had a well, but if your well got stuck or something dried up or whatever, happened, something happened to your well, you just come over and use our rope, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, <laughs> and before everybody had lights, we had um, these oil lamps. You put oil in the bottle, and it's got mm -hmm. a thing like a candle. Yeah, you light yeah. It, you use yeah. that for lights. Okay. We do that. We used to do that, I mean, yeah, way back here, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you know, things change. Everybody got electricity and yeah. plumbing moved inside and mm -hmm. all of that um, changed now. But as a result of it changing, so did we. Yeah. So I don't need you anymore. So I'm going to stay over here to myself. Mm -hmm. And you'll stay over there to yourself. Mm -hmm. Now we're not sharing our lives mm -hmm. like we used to. And, and that's what I kind of miss. It's like, when I think of Africa, I think of community. Community, yeah. I'm drawn to it because I hear stories like uh, Americans go there and, girl, I got on the bus 
and the lady just took her baby and put it right in my lap. <laughs> 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 While she got her bag. This lady, and I'm like, this lady just gave me her baby. What is going on? <laughs> and everybody was looking like it's natural. So she was like, okay, I guess this is one of, you know, and yeah. she got her stuff. She took her baby back. She took her baby, yeah. <laughs> That would never happen here. <laughs> it would never happen in the U.S.? Never. Never. I know you're not putting that baby on me. And and, 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 why, and, and and why is that? There's too much individualistic, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Everybody's so focused on self. All the things that matter in humanity, the things that matter to me, mm -hmm. is mostly gone. Mm -hmm. You have it. It exists, but how do you get to know somebody long enough to know that they have it? Yeah. When nobody talks. Everybody, oh, God, and now that we got this technology, everybody's like this. Everybody's on his phone, on his computer, <laughs> doesn't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> yeah. But it's true. It's true. Africa is a community. You know, um, you. I, I think we had a conversation once, and you know, in Africa, I can call somebody's child and either reward or punish that child. And the parent will come and say, you've done it. When I say punish, it's not about beating the person, but I mean correcting right. the person. Yes. Right. So they, they, they will see that. Yeah, that is good. That is good. You've done well. And even at some point when the child messes up again, the, the mother can tell the, the child, if you mess up, I'm going to tell that man there to come and whip your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love that. <laughs> yes. There, there is, there is, I have been beaten before by when I was young. When I say beat, I'm still using the correction, the correctional word. I've been corrected mm -hmm. before by uh, other people that I don't even know because <laughs> they won't watch you. An African elderly person won't watch you like like I'm like I'm passing by and I see two kids maybe messing around. I can call them, hey, the two of you come here. I can discipline the two of you. Anybody watching me will say, uh-huh, good one day, good one day. But it looks like on the other side, you can't you, you can't touch me. You you you, you I sometimes I watch videos, I, I watch videos and I see even children talking to their parents in a way and because they think there's a certain law that uh, covers them it 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 hurts my feelings you know to see a child that you've given birth to mm -hmm. i mean disrespecting you like that mm -hmm. it is it is it is it is difficult but now but now that i wouldn't say there's a war there's no war between africans and african americans but as an african american yourself what are we doing to the garbage like this? We are trying, you know, education is bringing us experiences. People are traveling to Africa like you are traveling yourself. When you get back, you have a different mentality. So then if you were this away from Africa, now you are like this. So mm -hmm. what do we do together? What are some of the things that we have to be doing among ourselves that will finally bring us close? I'm just talking, mm -hmm. talking. Okay, what I notice about when Africans come here, they get together, they go straight to the African community. Mm -hmm. So even though it's America, America is a melting pot of people of all nations, mm -hmm. all around the world. Mm -hmm. And Communities is a very racially divided country. Yeah. So even like the white people separate themselves. Mm -hmm. If you go to New York, you have the Jewish community, the Greek mm -hmm. community, the Italian community, you know, um, the Dutch. Everybody is separate. Yeah. Then you have the African community, the Puerto Rican community, the African American community. Everybody is separated. And when the Africans come, Sometimes they end up living in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So now we're kind of forced to get to know each other. Yeah. And usually they'll go to the African neighborhood. And when we come around, they're like, they're, it, you know, they treat us like, ew, 
<laughs> because the things that they heard <laughs> is that we don't want anything in life. We're bums. The women are loose. Uh, the men are gangsters. Everybody wants to shoot you and rob you. Everybody's on drugs. Mm -hmm. And that could not be the furthest thing from the truth. So we have to empty the things out of our mind. All of the um, um, pre, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Preconceived notions mm -hmm. of each other. You yeah. have to just kind of push it aside, wash it out. Mm -hmm. Whatever you learned on TV, whatever you learned from what that person over there said, you have to walk and test those words for yourself. Yeah. Or you're never going to know what's true mm -hmm. on either side. Mm -hmm. We're doing it more now than we've ever done. Yeah, I feel like you're doing it more. I feel like you're mm -hmm. doing it more. You 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 made a comment, and then you were like, "When Africans come, they want to get closer to you know the African community." It it it's so funny that because of such misconception about both of us, when African Americans also come to Ghana, they feel like Africans are they are people that they don't trust. So you see, they don't want to, some don't want to be getting so close. So it still has to do with the talking, like you are, you are, you are saying now, if we start talking, I might be able to say certain things that I thought about you. And now you're also saying things that you thought about me, then we may correct ourselves. And then we take it from there. I know people who are living in, African Americans who are living in Ghana, they are very happy because they decide to, to 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 walk the talk like like you said yeah. people will say it but if you don't walk it and see oh this thing that they were saying okay this is how it feels then we will still be having that that notion that okay africa is this africa is that now apart from the talking do you do you also think there are other things we can do among ourselves right this is not a work of maybe a government to say, hey, I'm trying to uh, come up with right. a project that will bring African-Americans or Africans together. It is our own work. We have to work it out ourselves. So apart from the talking, and then I think traveling, because you are, you are making the step to visit Africa and learn more about it. Do you think there are other things we can do aside that? Aside from communication, um... Well, for sure, that's where it starts, is talking. But I just want us to get to a point where we build. Mm -hmm. We get together enough to say, you know what? This is what we need. Mm -hmm. And, oh, this is what we need. Mm -hmm. Well, you have this, and mm -hmm. I have that. So let's, I'll do this part, and do that part, and let's build uh, our communities together. Yeah. Because nobody is going to do it for us. It's, you know... We have to learn to pray together. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to put God first before mm -hmm. anything we set out to do, because otherwise we're kind of destined to fail. You know, um, we can't really depend on man. We have to have his hand in it. Mm -hmm. And if his hand is in it, we can do anything. We yeah. have everything we need. We really do. Mm -hmm. We really do. Mm -hmm. It's just that we have to realize that it's not that man over there that's going to save us. Yeah. That man don't like us. Mm -hmm. So we have to depend on each other. I don't yeah. know how. I wish I had the magic answer. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> yeah, I, I know. It, 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 and, and I love this kind of conversation. You, you see, it, it eases people's tension. Somebody is sitting there, doesn't want to have anything to do with Africa. But when they see this conversation we are having, they will feel like, hmm, they are okay people. And somebody is also sitting in Africa saying, oh, so I thought these people are like that. But the final question I want to ask you is, assuming you are given the platform just to tell us a little bit about an African-American so that an African won't see an African-American and still have that notion. What are some of the things you would say about the, the lifestyle or the history of the culture of a typical African-American like you? Like, what are some of the things that somebody should have in mind positively towards an African-American? Who are they? What are they? What did they do in terms of 
uh, financial, uh, whatever, in terms of communicating with people, in terms of building a family, in terms of building a uh, business. Who is an African American? How do we how do we take somebody who is an African American? Okay, no pressure there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we are brutally honest. I mean, I I think the biggest difference I see between us and Africans is we are straight to the point, hard hitting. Let's get it done. Mm -hmm. And Africans are, we're going to do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But let's consider this, mm -hmm. and let's take our time. Mm -hmm. and, okay. Okay. Did you eat? Let's let's take care of the baby. And how's your mom? Mm -hmm. You know. Whereas um, in, in African American, it's like, all right, we're here to build this. Let's get it done. You got this. You got that. Let's go. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we have CPT in America. Color people time. They call it. <laughs> people time. <laughs> yeah. So if I tell you, let's get together at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. It'll probably be. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, unless it's serious business. Okay. Okay. If it's serious business, if I say nine, I'll be there a quarter of the night. Mm -hmm. But if it's something we're getting together to try to work something out, or we're getting together for something social, mm -hmm. it, it's not going to start when you say it's going to start. It's just not. And I heard the same thing is true in Africa. Yeah, dogs is like wait. <laughs> Somebody can tell you nine o'clock and show up at two o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> they call it the Ghana time or the African time. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, true. so we have that in common. Ours is just shorter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the, the the thing about African Americans are when we have seen. To me, if I'm being honest with you and I'm mm -hmm. I'm being upfront and I'm saying I'm not pulling any punches, I'm telling you exactly what it is, mm -hmm. it's because I care about you. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's not to hurt your feelings, it's not to be rude. <clears throat> and we understand that about each other. Mm -hmm. the, the way um a lot of Africans approach things. With the softness and subtle, subtleness, it could be perceived by an African American as, "What are you up to? Okay. What's your angle? Yeah. No, why? Why you got to talk about all that? You know, yeah. you don't care about my family. Okay. You know, that's what okay. you're thinking. <laughs> and what you're thinking is, oh, they're rude. You know, because mm. we just come with you like, yeah, straight. Right. We're just straight to it. <clears throat> So I had to learn. <laughs> uh, I used to work with GoDaddy. Mm -hmm. It's like a web building company. Web, web building, yeah. Online marketing and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's a global company. So we have we follow global business trends. Mm -hmm. And when you speak with someone, you greet them, right? This is not an American thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> After you say good afternoon, thank you for calling da 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 da. -da. After that, it's straight to the business. Yeah, they might not even say good afternoon back to you. <laughs> They're gonna go, my email's not working, and that, yeah. you know. So, <clears throat> globally, you have to. How are you? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm glad you're having a good day. It's like all of this preliminary yeah. conversation mm -hmm. that Americans aren't used to. And when used you to. hit Americans with that preliminary conversation. They feel like you're wasting their time or you're up to something. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It, 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 it makes, you see, that is, these are, these are some of the conversations. Thank you for bringing this thing up. This is what makes some Africans don't understand some African American <laughs> and it's vice versa. Because we are trained to, you know, when you, when you go to school, and then you want to start with languages. In languages, we the first thing you learn is, is, is on greetings. So greetings is our number one priority when it comes to Ghana. So, for example, if I'm seated here, and then there's somebody who stays somewhere close to my door or whatever, and then you pass by me without greeting me, and then you just go and knock, and then the person, there's no 
body there, and then you come back to ask me, oh, where is this person? <laughs> some some Ghanaian old woman will insult you. <laughs> yeah. Because when you were coming, you didn't see the need to greet and talk to me. You see, but when you didn't find the person, you're coming by asking you. They, some some will just sit as if they've not even seen you. They've not heard what they, you stand there and then you go by yourself. And then there's another one like um, the the police. We have police. We add police to everything. So like you said, an American will think this guy is up to something. But to us. We think it's courtesy to just find out. Okay. Yes, to to us, we think it's is is courtesy to find out how you are doing, how is everything going before we start, you know, getting into business. So mm -hmm. these are some of the the differences that we all have to learn. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> and yeah, that's true. That's the biggest thing I noticed. Mm -hmm. is that right there because I'm guilty of it. I'm, I am yeah. guilty. I just want to get to the point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> it took a minute for me to, to, to learn this all. Oh, how's your family? Yeah. And, I, mm -hmm. and your wife? And your, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. All of that. And then ease into the actual reason that I'm there. Yeah. 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 I, I, I get to, sorry to cut you off. I get sometimes to, to talk to, to chat some of, you know, African Americans who I'm connected to. And then when they, sometimes when they want to talk to me, they just go straight, hi, um, did you do this? I asked, that, like, I was like, sometimes I'm like, so can't you just ask me, how are you doing? I'm like, damn. <laughs> you know, but, but I understand. I understand. You see, so the, the regular communication conversations we have, if this extends to the other, other part of Ghana, other part of Africa, other part of the United States, or the African-American communities, both communities, we will, we will start, you know, learning, linking, connecting, doing more. Because now, now I'm learning. Maybe one day when I pick a phone and I call an African-American, I'll just go straight and shoot, and they will be okay with it, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> It, it it's painstaking. Okay, this is a good example. All right, now New York, mm -hmm. you're familiar. It's very fast moving. Okay. If you're walking down the street, you want to try to walk faster than the guy who's walking next to you. It mm -hmm. literally is a rat race. Rat People race. Are racing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you go in the store, <clears throat> you got to know what you want. You have to be have thought ahead. Mm -hmm. They don't want you looking at the menu and going. Um, what's in this? And um, give me a mo none of that. No, 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 no. You got to go up there and go because what's going to happen if you do that? The cash, the cashier, or the person that's serving you is mm -hmm. going to go stand over there next, and Whoa. then you're just going to keep going, and you might not ever get back in that line again. You might not ever get, but you missed your turn. You got to wow. go all the way to the back. Mm -hmm. In North Carolina, they'll walk up to the cash register. How are you doing today? I'm good. Well, how's your little dog? I haven't seen your mm -hmm. dog since then. Oh, that's, yeah, he's fine. You know, I have to take him to the bed and this and that. And you know how the kids are. How's your mm -hmm. baby? Oh, the baby's <laughs> fine. And this, you know, meanwhile, you're waiting behind this person. Behind the age. And they're just, Having conversations because it was cold last night. Last night, so I had to wear my sweater, and yeah, I know how you get cold like that. I've, ever since I've known you, and they're doing all of this talking, and if anything, you'll join in the conversation. I Ooh. know I had to turn my heat on last night. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's like that. Yeah, in North Carolina, yeah. and nobody gets offended. Now, if somebody's in a rush, they'll mm -hmm. start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they'll cut it a little short and go ahead on so this person can. But yeah, yeah. It, it, in New York, they would call that person rude. rude. If a New Yorker okay. was here standing in line behind a cold lady, mm -hmm. they would have been making smart remarks on their breasts. Yeah. And they thought it was so rude for them to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I've seen that, that, that example you made. 
when I go to the supermarket here, mm -hmm. in, in Africa or in Ghana, I will take my time, look through the things, walk around, do whatever I have to. But here, I've realized people come in. I have a friend here, right? He stayed here for some time now. When we go to the supermarket, he will, he will be like, um, so what are you picking? What are you picking? I, okay, are you done? Okay, let's go. I'm like, yo, relax. <laughs> Let me take my time. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, relax, take your time. He wouldn't even let us spend like 10 minutes. I'm like, I need to look. <laughs> <laughs> but but at, at, at some point, at some, and one other thing, it is not about it, it is it, it is about learning the cultures, right? Learning both cultures. When I came here a few months last month, when I came, I entered into a bus, and I forgot that I was in Canada. So when I go in, I wanted to greet every like greets in general, because in Ghana when you enter the bus, I mean the trotro, right? You might want to say um, maybe good morning everybody, and then you go and sit. So I was thinking I was in Ghana. So when I entered the bus, I was just looking at faces to be, but everybody had this thing on, like this, like, like on their phones. I'm like, <laughs> on their phones, nobody, they don't even yeah. raise their head. I'm like, yeah. It's like the rat race here is 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 way it's different real. from Africa. Yeah, it's real. I don't think we need to take that American trait to Africa. Yeah. I think we need to learn how to calm down, take our time. You, you enjoy life so much better mm -hmm. when you actually take life in. Yeah. If you're moving fast and always trying to get to the point and always trying to be at first to the finish line, you're not really taking in life. You're not, mm -hmm. you're not enjoying each day. Each we're only here, we're like grass. We yeah. grow, we cut, we die, and it's over. That is it, yeah. You know, so while you're here. Try to get some enjoyment out of it. Love your family. Enjoy your community. Take your time to think about things. You make better decisions mm -hmm. when you take your time and think about it. Right, 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 right. When you when you when you take your time, you get opportunity to to make be better decisions for your life, for your friends, for your family, and everything. Is 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 a wonderful opportunity that we have in this conversation uh we, we we we've said a lot and then the the bottom line is we need to talk more we need to talk more and uh i'm i'm glad you came on this platform which i am basically looking at using my platform to talk more to people and it is not only going to be me sometimes we have two three people online like this having a conversation, sharing, talking, learning about each other and all that. So I really want to appreciate you coming on my channel. <laughs> and uh, I want to give you the opportunity to you. yeah, to say your last word to anybody who is watching this channel right now. Okay, so I would like to say to both the African and the African-American, take, take time to get to know each other. If you're going to have conversation about the other one, have the other one in the room. Don't be a group of Africans talking about how African-Americans are if you don't have an African-American in the room and vice versa. Don't be a group of African-Americans talking about how Africans are if you don't have one in the room. And if you're gonna do it, do it in love. It's not about verses. We're not, if we keep versing each other, we'll be forever on the bottom. Because united we stand and divided we fall. So if if you're gonna be anything in this whole African, African American thing, be a united one. It's it's one Africa, Africa one, Africa first. Thank you. One Africa, Africa first. I really appreciate you. And if you're watching this uh channel, this video right now, put up a comment, let me know what you think about this conversations that we are having. Thank you very much for being on my channel. Thank you, Echo.